suppose we have a set of data values. The first thing that we always consider is, well, what is the average of the data values? And after we have that, after we look at the big picture, it's time to consider individual data points. And specifically, we're going to continue our discussion of answering the question, how far is a specific value from being average? In this video, what we're going to look at is the z-score. The z-score is defined to be the number of standard deviations a specific value is away from the mean. So let's consider a few examples of z-score. Suppose in our first example that we have a data set with a mean of say 20 and a sample standard deviation of 3. So for the sample data set, let's go ahead and calculate the z-score for the three values 26, 21 and a half, and 19. Remember, the z-score measures the number of standard deviations a specific value is away from the mean. So 26 is a total of six units away from the mean, so we anticipate that z-score of 26, so I'm going to write z sub 26 to represent the z-score for 26, is 2, because this is two standard deviations away from the mean. Now for the second value of 21 and a half, note that this is 1.5 units above my mean of 20, so that is exactly one half of a standard deviation away. So we anticipate that z sub 21.5 is equal to one half, because it's exactly half of my standard deviation of three units above, uh, or standard deviations above my mean of t uh, 20. 19 is one unit less than my average of 20. So z sub 19, we anticipate is negative one third, or approximately negative 0.3 standard deviations above, or sorry, below the mean of 20. So this seems fairly simple. The z-score measures the number of standard deviations a specific value is away from the mean. What could be difficult about this? Um, well, let's switch to considering our large data set. So recall that this data set has the 10 values ranging from 49 up through 76. Um, now with the large data set, the mean or the average was a 64.1 and the sample standard deviation was approximately 8.517. Well, that was rounded, but we'll, we'll work with that. So in our large data set, suppose we wanted to know well, what is the z-score of 68? So calculate the z-score of 68. Um, let's see, 68.517, well, 68 is approximately four units above the mean of 64.1. And since my sample standard deviation is eight and a half, I anticipate that Z sub 68 is going to be something close to one half because four is a little bit less than one half of my standard deviation. But this is an approximation. This is not good enough. If we want to have a rigorous definition for the z-score being the number of standard deviations a specific value is away from the mean, we need to come up with a formula rather than just giving approximate values. So what is the formula for the z-score? Well, here it is. To calculate the z-score, the formula for this is we take our specific data value, subtract our mean, and divide by the standard deviation. Now this is in terms of um, sample values. So this is the sample mean, and this is the sample standard deviation. When we perform this computation, this results in the number of standard deviations my specific value x is away from the mean. This is certainly a formula that you will want to know, and you'll get to know it as you do a lot of examples. Now, if you have a population, um, the, the notation will look slightly differently, but the formula is still the same. The z-score is equal to your specific data value minus the mean divided by the population standard deviation. 
with this formula, let's go back and actually calculate the z-score of 68. So z sub 68, again, I'm just using the subscript notation to indicate this is the z-score for 68. This will be equal to the number of standard deviations 68 is above my sample mean of 64.1 is calculated by the following. 68 minus 64.1 divided by approximately We'll go with 8.517. If we plug that into a calculator, we will get something that's approximately 0.46. So that's how many standard deviations 68 is above the mean of 64.1. And notice that this value is slightly less than 1 half, which is what we estimated it would be but we got a more precise answer by using the formula. Let's do some more examples of calculating z-scores. Um, this time around, let's turn to uh, our small data set. So remember we had the small data set, 55578. Now the average, the sample mean of this data set was 6, and the sample standard deviation was the square root of 2. So what is the z-score of um, the value will go with the value 7. z sub 7 is equal to, remember it's your data value minus the average divided by the standard deviation. So this is 7 minus 6 over the square root of 2. Plug that into a calculator and rounding slightly we get 0 0.71. This means that 7, the data value 7, is 0 0.71 standard deviations Um, above the mean of 6 in my data set. That's kind of the conclusion of what the z-score tells us. So let's come do a comparison of the two previous examples we did. With the large data set, we saw that the z-score of 68 was approximately 0.46. So it's 0.46 standard deviations above the mean. Whereas in my small data set, we saw that the z-score of 7 is approximately 0.71. That means that 7 is about 0.71 standard deviations above the mean. Now it turns out that as we're trying to ask the question, you know, how far is a specific value from being average, the z-score allows us to compare different data values and see which one is closer to average than another. So which value relatively speaking within its own data set. Which value is relatively closer to its mean? It turns out that 68 is relatively closer. And this is because it has a lower z-score. And a lower z-score means it is fewer standard deviations from the mean. So again, the impact of comparing two z-scores is it tells us which one is closer to the mean. Now, if I have two people who are taking two different exams and we calculate their respective z-scores, who performed better? The one who is more standard deviations above. So there you'd want to look for a higher positive z-score um, in order to find who performed relatively better. Um, on their respective exam. Now there's one final fun fact that we can consider in talking about z-scores and this actually comes from our m friendly Russian mathematician Pafnuty Shevyshev. Now recall Shevyshev's theorem had to deal with you know the number of data values that would be within so many standard deviations of the mean. Well by Shevyshev's result the z-score for most data values will be within the interval negative 3 to 3. Or we could write it that the z-score is almost always going to be between the values of negative 3 and 3. So again, the z-score for a specific data value calculates the number 
of standard deviations, a specific data value is away from the mean. The formula we use is again, take your specific data value, subtract the average, and divide by the standard deviation. And that is the z-score.